This is part one of a guide to the Ford Model B distributor. Yes, that's B as in build it yourself, because that's what I'll do in this video. Now in part two, I'll test the advanced curve for a B distributor, and we'll see whether that curve can be changed. If you're a Model A owner who's thinking about modifying your engine in creative ways, you've probably heard of the Model B distributor. It was introduced with the Model B car in 1932. It eliminated the need to manually adjust the spark advance and it moved the condenser away from the hot exhaust manifold, which had caused a high rate of condenser failure on the A distributor. Now, B distributors can be used on the Model A with very little modification, but despite these advantages, they tend to have a poor reputation for reliability, and there is virtually no reproduction market for their parts. In this video, I want to help Model A owners who are considering a B distributor understand how they work and how you go about getting one. So how does the B distributor work? Well, the short version is, as the shaft spins faster, these weights want to pivot out. And as they move, these slots force the sleeve around the shaft to rotate. Which rotates the cam to a position ahead of where the shaft is, thus advancing the moment in time when the cam lobe trips the breaker arm to spark the cylinder. Now this is a timing curve recorded for a B distributor by Jim Kellett in 2006. He also recorded a new Rex automatic timing device uh, so that you can compare the two. Notice that while the new Rex timing curve is actually a curve, the B curve is essentially a straight line. That's typical of centrifugal advanced mechanisms that use springs. The factory instruction for the Model B engine was to set the initial timing at 19 degrees before top dead center. Uh, so just remember these are what, it, what you're seeing is distributor RPM and distributor advance. Distributor spins uh, at half the speed of the crankshaft, so you gotta double these numbers. Um, so 19 degrees, or you know what you're seeing here is 9.5. Before top dead center is where you start. That's your initial timing. And then you can see the mechanical advance kicks in around 800 crankshaft RPM. And then it's all in around 2600 RPM with a total of, looks like about 15 degrees crankshaft advance, giving you a total timing of 34 degrees. So if you were gonna use this on a Model A, the main thing you need to do is to figure out how to set your initial timing to 19 degrees. Uh, the answer is you either buy a Model B valve cover or you can watch my video on precision timing. Now, most of your cruising in a Model A will be done at uh, 200, uh, sorry, 2000 to 2200 RPM. And on a Model A, that's about 45 to 52 miles an hour. So, you know, you are never gonna see the maximum advance, you're gonna see about, about 11 to 12 degrees of advance. So starting from 19 degrees crankshaft in advance initial timing, that would put your total timing at around 30 degrees, which is perfect. So you're kind of done. Um, so let's talk through how you would get a B distributor in working order. The first thing you need to do is to find an old B distributor on eBay or at a swap meet. Here's a picture of the one I got after I had taken it apart. Although this unit was heavily used, it had all the key parts that are difficult to find. And I sent this unit off to Dave Renner at Renner's Corner Early Ford Parts. Dave is pretty much the only vendor rebuilding B distributors right now. So it helps that he is an extremely nice person. Generous with his time, he likes to teach, his prices are reasonable. I really cannot say enough good things about him. So here's the unit as I got it back from Dave, uh, all cleaned up. So first let's look at the casting. When you're buying a used casting, you want to check all the usual Model A casting issues. So make sure the tabs for the cap clamps are intact. Make sure the indexing pin is there. Make sure that the locating pin is there. Uh, and check for cracks um, at the base. So right around here where there's um, corners. Uh, this can get cracked if the distributor gets pried loose from a rusty head. One interesting thing to note here uh, is this flat edge. Hopefully you can see. This flat edge that is uh, machined up the side. 
This was an improvement in the late A distributors. I actually got one right here. This is a Model A distributor. And you can see there's, it's a little bit smaller, but there's the same flat machined in it. And there's a little tiny little relief here. And what these do is it creates a vent that allows water vapor from the valve chamber to escape between the casting and the cylinder head instead of trying to escape through the bore where it would corrode the shaft. So there's, yeah, there's a gap here and then there's a little tiny gap machined right there. New bushings have been installed. This is done pretty much the way you would do it on the A distributor. Um, the, you've got this little raised section right here. Uh, so you need to make sure that the upper bushing is at least a tenth of an inch uh, below where the casting begins. And um, again, I don't know if you can see, but um, right where the right where the oiler comes in, um, there is a hole in the upper bushing. And the purpose of that hole is, you know, obviously to allow oil to get in. Uh, now I've been told that the original bushings didn't have a hole, but the original bushings were made from porous bronze so that the oil would wick through to the shaft. Reproduction bushings are different material, not porous. So you need to install the bushing and then, you know, get the oiler out, run a drill through there, clean it up. Uh, so I've got the oiler in, the cap clamps and the rivets are already set up just like you do it for an A distributor. So now let's look at the upper shaft. So this shaft uh, is similar in dimensions to the A upper shaft. Uh, and if you've bought a used distributor, perhaps you could use the one that comes with yours. Um, but usually the one that comes with yours is gonna be too worn because uh, they're usually not, uh, they usually haven't been properly lubricated their whole life or they're just too old. Um, but don't toss it because this uh, governor plate, also called the weight plate, um, you're gonna need this to uh, have it welded to the replacement shaft. Now, an important thing to notice is uh, these pins right here. So when I got these parts back, um, having had it put on the new shaft, I noticed that these pins were seriously worn down. These pins should be a snug fit to the governor plates. If there's too much play between the weight and the pin, then when the distributor is spinning, the weight will slide around. Uh, it's hard to demonstrate, but basically it'll allow the weight to kind of push in this way which moves the slot back clockwise. Uh, and what that does is actually reduces the available timing advance. A lot of folks complain that the B distributor doesn't advance properly. Uh, and one reason is excessive wear on these pins. So if you see that you've got to build the pin back up and shape it, um, you can do it with weld. You can, if you've got, you know, really small tubing, lots of different ways to do it. I did it with JB weld. I think it turned out okay. I'm not gonna pretend this is the ideal way to do it, but it's what I had. Um, and there's not a lot of force on these. Like, I think it'll be fine uh, as long as the pins, as long as the weights can pivot properly. Before I get started on assembly, I wanna show you the lubricants that I'll be using. I mean, friction. Friction is the number one enemy of the B distributor, right? The shaft spins in the bushings, the advance plate, this thing is gonna rotate on the shaft. The weights are pivoting. There's a whole lot going on. Uh, all kinds of things sliding. So lubrication is absolutely critical. Um, now, uh, because this unit is gonna go back on the shelf for a while after I build it today, every place that you would use oil, I'm gonna use assembly lube. But there are also a lot of pivoting and sliding parts. And for those, I'm using cam lube. That's right. You thought that tube of cam lube would rest the rest, last the rest of your life, but actually it's perfect for all these sliding weights and pivoting things for the advanced governor on the B distributor. So you really need a grease for these that's designed to stay exactly where it's put under centrifugal force and shear. So cam lube. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we got this thin washer, uh, which is special to the B distributor. And uh, I'll put the spec for it up uh, in the video, but this is gonna go, this goes right around the shaft right here. Like 
like that. And um, you can see this fits right here. This washer is going to sit right there. So now, get the shaft in. Okay, so now you need to check the end play between the shaft sleeve and the casting. Uh, so it should be between sixth and ten thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to put this washer on. This is one of two washers that can go above the shaft sleeve to fix that end play. These are common to both the A and B distributors, as is the sleeve, so you can buy these from all the usual vendors. So you put the shaft sleeve on. I'm just gonna temporarily pin it with a roll pin punch. And then you wanna check the clearance with a feeler gauge. So you kind of need, um, it's like a go no go where six thousandths does fit, but 11 thousandths, which of course is five and six together, doesn't fit. So six does fit. And 11 doesn't fit, so we're good. So now I have to go to go put the roll pin in. So I'll be right back. Got the roll pin in, all set. Before we start, or before we go any further, I wanna point out the parts here uh, that you cannot get anymore. So the governor plate I mentioned already, right? Then you've got the governor advance plate and the weights and oops, the upper plate, okay? So the, the used distributor that you buy has to have serviceable units of these four parts. Everything else you can get reproductions or substitutes or uh, new old replacement stock usually. First, we're gonna lubricate the pins and the slide. put a little on the underside of the weights. Put the weight on. So there you go, slides freely. We're going to put on the governor advance uh, so these two pins are going to fit into these slots and then this goes around the shaft so we're going to lube each of those spots okay. so this should move really freely Now we're gonna attach the springs between the two plates. Uh, Dave Renner supplies these springs. He says they are the original stiffness. Um, springs are one of the places where B condenser, um, B distributors can get into a lot of trouble. Um, if your springs are too stiff, which seems to be often the case, then you won't actually get any advance out of it because the weights just won't spin out. So. Um, these are the way, these are the springs I got from Dave, but we are definitely going to want to test these with a timing light. Um, and if, uh, you know, I mean, if you've got a sun machine, go for that, but most of the time it's just a timing light. And if 
uh, the springs don't do what you need, then you definitely are gonna wanna find some other ones or see if you can get a replacement or see if there's something specific about your distributor that's causing problems. Okay, so now you can see the weights want to move out, but the springs pull them back in. Okay. In part two, I will look at the advanced curve that you get with these springs and whether it's possible to substitute other springs to get a better curve. So stay tuned for that. So now we're gonna put the upper plate spring over the governor assembly. It's got a tab here to keep it in place. This is one of those parts that you can't get anymore. I didn't include it. Um, I didn't include it as a part that you have to have because Renner's Corner sells a spring washer kit that does basically the same thing. If yours is missing, it's not quite the same, but I think it serves the same purpose. Um, I'm guessing they made it this way with the concave shape to try to keep uh, grease from escaping the lower half of the casting. That's just a guess, I don't really know. So now, I'm gonna put on the upper plate. The B upper plate is pretty different from the A plate. So you'll notice the point block is riveted on, not screwed on. And instead of here on the A plate, you'd have a, a connection point to get the pigtail wire coming up from uh, the lower plate, but it just has this tab coming out here, uh, which is where the wires from the ignition key and the condenser will attach. And you'll notice it doesn't have an arm sticking out to be rotated for spark advance. Instead, it's got this tab, which is gonna go down uh, to the casting right here and get screwed in place uh, to hold it. And hopefully you can see there's these hash marks here so you can do some fine tuning of the timing with the, um, with the distributor in the car. I believe this is roughly plus or minus 10 crankshaft degrees. I'm not positive about that. And generally when you're assembling these, you wanna try to, you wanna center it on the screw rather than on the casting, just so that you're, it doesn't really make a big difference because you have the same amount of range either way, but um, your timing, you know, you're gonna time it from right here. So then when you're making adjustments, at least you've got the same amount of adjustment space on either side. Okay, so now we put the breaker arm on. Now these breaker arms, they're not making them anymore, um, but there's a fair amount of old replacement stock out there. So here's the one I'm putting on. Right now these are about 25 bucks a set. That gets you the arm and the, um, and the screw. Although the screw is the same as the Model A screw, so you don't really need to worry about that. But um, I'll just show you. I ordered, I ordered a bunch of breaker arms just off the internet. So I ordered four of them, and here's the four that I got. Of these four, I think two probably are usable, uh, and one of the usable ones is missing a part. So, um, so this one. I got, it's, it seems to have come from the same vendor as, as this one, maybe. But um, the thing that is key here is, so you see there's this copper strip and then there's the spring. The spring is the thing that, that returns the breaker arm, keeps it on the cam. The copper arm, hopefully you can see, it's not quite as long as the spring And what happens if you try to put it on is that after a little bit of vibration, this thing just pops out and is very difficult to get it to go back in and stay in. So it's just ever so slightly too short. So be watch out for those. There's going to be some that have where the copper strip is just too short. 
this one is just crap. Like, look at this thing. It's like steel. This is rusty. Ugh. It's really lightweight, like it feels flimsy. This one feels solid. This feels like old new replacement stock. You know, like it came from the 40s or 50s or something. It's pretty well made. And one thing that's interesting about it, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the um, the rubbing block is longer. So you kind of get more rubbing block with for your dollar. Um, but one thing you'll notice here is it's just the copper strip. It doesn't include the steel spring. That's going to be characteristic of a lot of the old uh, stock for these breaker arms. They won't come with the spring. So if you if yours came with one that has a spring, or if you um, you know can buy one that has the spring, save the spring. You'll have to it it comes out. You can kind of thread it out, but you'll have to swap the spring over to the over to the new one. So these two are crap. This one's my spare. And this is the one that's going in. Uh, one thing here too, um, I had to, uh, when I put this on first, this dowel, this kind of copper dowel, uh, it was too thick. Uh, and so this was basically an interference fit on here. And I put it on and the arm would go out, but then wouldn't snap back because there was too much friction. Even with grease, there was too much friction. Um, and ultimately I had to sand this down like a thousandth or so. So what I did was I cut emery cloth into really thin strips and I just kind of went like this uh, real carefully for about 15 minutes. And then uh, once I got it narrow enough, I did some test fits and I polished it with super fine steel wool and that worked great. So a little bit of cam lube. And you kind of hold these together and pop it on and just make sure that you're not catching the tab or the point block or this little, these rivets here. There you go. So now it's nice and springy. Okay, next we're going to put the cam in place. Now this is the famous B cam supposedly superior to the stock Model A cam. Well, it's worth a short digression here. So this is the service bulletin uh, where the B cam was announced or described. Now, a lot of you have probably seen this maybe, but on the next page, it says both A and B cams are available for service. In other words, the B cam was never meant to supersede the A cam. It was designed for the B engine only. Now, why is that? Well, as you may also have heard, uh, the B cam gives more dwell. Uh, you can see here the, the point arm uh, is gonna drop away much earlier on this cam than on this one, which means that the point arm comes back into contact with the point block sooner and remains in contact for a longer period of time. And that's important because the amount of time that the arm is in contact with the block is called dwell. And it's measured in degrees of the circle. Uh, so in other words, for how many degrees is the arm in contact uh, with the block for each rotation? The A cam has about 32 degrees of dwell. This is what I've been told. Uh, and the B cam has about 43 degrees of dwell. So now, why do we care? Uh, is like more dwell better? More is better? Is that what it was? So dwell time is important because for as long as the points are in contact with each other, current is flowing through the circuit and charging up the condenser. When the points open, the condenser discharges through the coil to boost the spark voltage. If the points are not in contact for long enough, then the condenser doesn't fill up and the spark is too weak. But here's the catch. This only matters when you start to get up into higher RPMs and higher compression. So look, so this is a chart published by Ford in 1933. 
Now this shows the Model A, Model B, and the early V8s uh, in contrast, the engines in contrast with each other. So you can see a couple of things here. Uh, first on the right, you can see that at any given RPM, right? So here's engine RPM here, and uh, this is compression in pounds. So for any given RPM, the B develops higher compression than the A. This is important because the more compression, in other words, the higher the compression ratio of the cylinder head, the higher the spark voltage that you need to jump the air gap on the spark plug. Now on the left, you can see this is engine RPM and this is horsepower. And basically what I want you to see here is the Model B, which is this one, is expected to operate at a uh, up to 3,400 RPM with horsepower peaking around 2,800 RPM while the A is expected to operate up to a maximum of about 2,800 RPM with the horsepower peaking around 2,200. So that's a 25% increase in the RPM range where the engine is designed to be cruising. And when it's cruising, it's developing 25% more compression on each stroke. So that means that the spark voltage has to be higher at these cruising speeds, which means that the B condenser has to have a higher capacity than the A condenser, and the B cam has to provide more dwell time than the A cam to charge it up, right? Because if you're operating at 3,400 RPM, the, the fraction of a second that you're on the, that your point arm is on the block, you know, as this is spinning, that gets shorter and shorter and shorter, but you have to develop 25% more compression on the stroke. So it's got to have higher voltage from a shorter amount of time. And so that's why they're trying to get as much dwell as they can out of this design. And they made the condenser bigger. Um, but all of this is specific to, if not the B engine, then at least engines that are higher performance than the stock A. So if you're running a B distributor on an otherwise stock A engine, you can use the A cam if you have one. It provides all the dwell you need. Now, in my case, I'm gonna use this on an engine that's a little bit souped up. So I'm gonna use the B cam and you know, don't, don't feel bad about using the B cam. I'm just saying like, I'm just saying don't feel bad about using the A cam, I guess. It's fine, nothing wrong with it. Okay, so. Finally using cam lube on the actual cam. Very exciting. There you go. Okay. Next up is the cam screw. This is the same cam screw as the Model A. This is the uh, drilled cam screw uh, for oiling, uh, which is how all the reproduction screws are these days. Uh, but I'm not gonna be oiling this here because my shaft isn't drilled. Hopefully you can see, there's no hole there. Um, in that case, if you do have a shaft that isn't drilled, what's gonna work for you is to just, you get an oiler bottle like this. Um, and when you do your maintenance, you're just gonna squirt oil right down in this little gap right there where it's gonna go uh, down kind of in through the, down under the advance plate. And there are, if you remember, there's those holes where the governor plate is welded to the shaft and it'll drip down through those holes. So that's what you do if you don't have a drilled shaft. Um, now, a lot of people don't appreciate how unusual this screw is. For one thing, the thread pitch is the rarely seen 0.325 uh, by 30 TPI. So that means this is 0.325 inches wide with 30 threads per inch. Now that is a weird size. 0.325 is like, as a fraction, that's like 13 fortieths. Uh, you don't see this. You certainly don't see this anywhere else on the car. So the lesson here is don't ever strip the threads on a distributor camshaft because you do not have a tap that fits them. Uh, for another thing, it's a Philister head screw. So Philister heads have the slightly rounded top and tall cylindrical sides. This shape gives it a deeper drive slot than conventional flat head screws, which is nice when you're trying to get a screwdriver on it and hold a camera edge at the same time. Um, and in fact, all of these, if you look here, so that, that's a Philister head. 
Um, that's a Filster head right there. These are all Filster heads. Now I've seen these screws paired with all different kinds of washers. Uh, and usually what you see is big fat lock washers. So it's this and a big fat lock washer under it. Uh, and I do not like doing it that way because what'll happen with those big ones is the, the edges of the lock washer will dig into the screw and the top of the camshaft, uh, make little, you know, kind of scrapey grooves in there. And that'll make it harder when you're doing your timing procedure. The factory spec for these washers uh, in both the Model A and the Model B is a thin flat washer underneath a thin lock washer. That's the spec. And I'll put the specs for these washers up in the video. Well, once we're all set there, you can pop the rotor on and the distributor body. Now back in, my, back in uh, the day, they did make distributor bodies that were specific to the B distributor. And you can identify them because the window here is gonna be shorter on the top, shorter than the uh, window on the A body because it doesn't need to, um, it doesn't need to clear this arm. Right, you don't have the arm. Uh, but I've never seen one in the wild. Um, the only ones I've seen are these aftermarket bodies that work for either the A or the B. And then you put your cap on and clamp it down. Now, the condenser for the B distributor looks a little different than the A condenser. And as I mentioned, the capacitance is higher. It's generally around 0.32 to 0.36 microfarads. If you want more information on B condensers, I did a whole long video on those and I will put a link up to that. So we thread the wire through and then condenser is gonna ground right here on this strap and it is going to attach at this tab right here. Now we come to one of the biggest changes between the A and B distributors, which is uh, you can't connect the armored Model A ignition cable. Um, so if you go back and look at the A distributor, uh, the armored cable is gonna screw into this uh, big purpose-built hole in the casting and plug directly into the lower plate bus bar. But there's no spot on the B casting to do that. Instead, the Model B used this wire loom, which wraps the high tension wire and the ignition wire together. And the ignition wire flag terminal is gonna attach right here, right where the condenser does. And then the high tension wire goes up to the coil. Now, having said that, I did see a workaround uh, created by Henry Chauvin, who published the instructions on vintageforwardforum.com. And he uses a thin metal plate, which fits under the distributor and on that plate, there's a plastic and wire adapter that you put together. And so then the armored cable screws into the adapter and the adapter runs a wire to the upper plate. So that allows you to swap out the B distributor for an A distributor without rewiring the ignition. So now we're done, right? Nope, there's one more thing to know about the B distributor. Because the B is taller than the A, taller above the cylinder head, the Model A stock plug connectors won't reach from the plug terminal to the body terminals, particularly if you're using modern plugs, which uh, tend to be shorter than the original Champion 3X plugs. So that means you either need to use plug wires, or you can order these Model B plug connectors, uh, which are longer. So you may already have them. Uh, measure your plug connectors. If the overall length is three and three quarter inches, then you've already got the B type. If you need to buy some, you are looking for part B-12275, uh, and you should try to find the bronze ones. So here endeth the lesson. Uh, as I said, in part two, I'll show you how to test the springs for the B distributor and how those springs affect the advance curve. Full disclosure, it will be a while before I get to part two. Uh, this is going on to the project car, and I have a lot of tasks before I'm ready to run it. So it's definitely gonna be a few months. Um, but until then, thanks for watching.